Dan's an idiot. <laughs> Ollie's grumpy. <laughs> Nicky's cute. <laughs> Mike's bad. <laughs> and Kirby's a clown. They are the guinea pigs, five of the most stupid people in the universe. <laughs> and this is Professor Stuart Milligan. Now that's practical science. One of the cleverest and he's going to push the boys physically and mentally to the absolute limits of stupidity, all in the pursuit of science. Imagine you're a cow. Hooray for science! <laughs> Coming up on tonight's show, not one but two cycling world champions in Boy v Girl. The truth behind man-eating worms. Kirby breaks his teeth while attempting to break a world record. And suck you, suck me, no suck Dan, because he's getting liposuction. Now, let's begin with the first experiment. Are bugs really delicious, or even nutritious? Let's find out by making the guinea pigs munch on them. Boys, welcome to the wonderful world of entomology. Molology? It's entomology, you stupid boy. What? what? Moth larvae. What's the matter? That's right, the boys are going to eat bugs. Oh. They're high in protein and low in calories. What part of the science behind this? Talk us through meal again. Insects are very nutritious, and many cultures all over the world eat them as part of their staple diet. So why do we think that it's disgusting? Is it really any different from eating prawns, mussels or chicken? No. It's just that we've been taught to think of eating them as gross since we've been children. So which pig do you think has enough strength of mind to overcome this indoctrination? If any of the pigs will do well at this, it should be Dan. He'll put anything in his mouth. Here he is eating two kilos of tripe. That's drinking half a pint of chilli. That's chalk. That's an egg with the shell still on. And here he is with 26 marshmallows stuffed in his cake hole. Yes, he's a pig in every sense of the word, except when it comes to eating bouncy locusts. Oh, life gets better. Am <laughs> I scared of insects? Yeah. He's <laughs> fighting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right, no, no. <laughs> Grab it. Grab it there like that. Five. Five. <laughs> oh, it's still alive! <laughs> ah. <laughs> They're massive, though. That's a proper mouthful. This one tastes like bacon. Oh, that looks so enjoyable. I think I should have one for myself. <laughs> Me? <laughs> Look at that! I love science. <laughs> Go on, at least get one down, yeah? Yes! I'm the last one. He's breathing. Uh, was breathing. <laughs> well done, Mike, you big, brave pig. And what are your conclusions, Professor? In a rapidly changing climate, why don't we farm crickets for food rather than cattle? They're full of goodness, five times more efficient at converting food into protein, and each female produces 1,500 offspring. So not only are they nutritious and economical, but according to Mike and Ollie, delicious as well. Hooray for science. Sometimes the guinea pigs will do something so stupid that science is lost for words. This is one of those moments. This is a car, a very fast car. And Kirby here loves fast cars. 
almost as much as he loves donuts. In fact, today, Kirby is going to attempt to break the world record for eating donuts whilst doing donuts. The current world record for eating donuts while a car's donutting. <laughs> Seriously, 12 donuts in 90 seconds. So you're going to be in the car, That's stuffing sweet. donuts down your face while I'm spinning the car around. <laughs> oh, uh... You up for it? Yeah, oh, definitely, okay. man. What I forgot to say is your mates are going to be standing in the middle and we're donutting around them, and they're going to give you the donuts. Jeez. <laughs> are you still up for it, lads? <laughs> Best mates ever. Yeah, we'll look after him. How do you give them the donuts? So what's the science behind this, Professor? Well, I was going to explain the theory that the universe is shaped like a donut. But if I could travel for billions of light years in this direction, I would come back here. But really, how can astrophysics compete with Kirby eating donuts in a car doing donuts? It just can't. Remember, the world record is 12 donuts in 90 seconds. Good luck, Kirby. Thirty seconds into his world record attempt, and Kirby's eaten only one donut. He'd better get a move on. Sixty seconds and two donuts down, and Kirby's record attempt is quickly following the same trajectory as Jade Goody's career. And despite trying to run the other pigs over, the only person injured is Kirby. Oh, he's tripped oh his poo! He's tripped his poo! <laughs> oh, legendary! You got it. Yeah. Oh. Kirby may have broken his tooth, but what about that world record? Uh... <laughs> well, Kirby. The record for 12 donuts in 90 seconds, you didn't get close. The only thing that you broke today, mate, was your tooth. You managed <laughs> three. Wow. <laughs> Lesser man would have stopped Use. at two. <laughs> I carried on. Useless. Blood. It's so interesting. Well, OK. As we know, vampires don't exist, do they? Of course not. At least not human ones. But there is a bloodsucker, which has been around for thousands of years and loves nothing better than to fill its stomach with blood. Earlier in the show, we saw Dan and Nikki fail to eat a variety of insects. Now it's the creepy crawlies turn to bite back. These are leeches. And this is Dan and Nikki. Viewers of a nervous disposition look away now, because we're going to find out who tastes better, Screaming Dan or Wincy Nikki. This could get a little bloody. Nikki's leeches weigh in at 1.3 grams, while Dan's weigh 2.6. But how much will they weigh once they've feasted? Only one way to find out. Let the bloodletting begin. Grab you the way. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike humans, leeches never know when they're going to have their next bite to eat. So, when they eat, they eat a lot. This is why they won't let go of the boys until they've had their fill of their blood, which could take anywhere from 15 to 90 minutes. It looks like someone's got a pot of paint on the <laughs> squirt this. Can you feel it? Yeah. What's it doing? Whoa, that one's going for it. We haven't told Dan that the leech here actually has three jaws and 100 teeth on each one. But Dan isn't feeling any pain because when it bites, it releases his own local anaesthetic. Mmm, tasty. Ingenious. You do look nervous. I am nervous. I am, my heart's racing, man. Look at that one, that <coughs> is going for it. Whoa, 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 there's one. Hang on, mate, hang on, hang on, wait. What are we doing about this blood? Just leave me. Leeches actually have a long history in medicine. They were traditionally used for bloodletting, based on the mistaken belief that if someone was ill, a leech could suck out the sickness. 
we now know that's a really stupid idea. But leeches are still used today in reconstructive surgery because they release an anticoagulant into the wound. And this prevents the blood from clotting and keeps the blood flowing to the newly attached organ. Anticoagulant in the leech mucus means you're going to bleed for between eight and ten hours. What? <laughs> 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 Not happy. Not happy, Nick's leech has increased by over eight grams, while Dan's increased an incredible 17. Amazing. Each leech has more than quadrupled in size. So, as far as leeches are concerned, guinea pigs are a tasty dinner which just goes to show there's no accounting for taste. Remember, kids, leeches are for medicine, not for fun. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you Rachel Atherton, the former Junior World Downhill Mountain Bike Champion, which can only mean one thing, it's boy v girl. This week's Boy V Girl is a bike race at the indoor cycling arena at Manchester, which means the pigs have got their Sunday best lycra on. Do you think the boys will win this one? I doubt it. <laughs> that was fun. Yay! Oh, yay! <laughs> Looking at this, you may find it hard to believe that cycling is the most efficient form of human transport. <laughs> However, when you look at this, you can see how. This is Olympic and world champion Chris Hoy, who recently broke the world speed record for 500 metres, clocking a time of 24.7 seconds. That's an average speed in excess of 72 kilometres an hour making him the fastest man in the world, powered by his own body. And looking at his legs, it's hardly surprising. Look at them, they're huge. As is his heart. It's true, just like your biceps, your heart is muscle, and if worked hard enough, it will grow. Today's competitors, Ollie and Mike, are not top-ranking athletes. They do not have enlarged hearts. But Mike is incredibly competitive. <laughs> While Ollie, contrary to appearances, insists he's only a kebab shop away from achieving a four minute mile. You're in here. 22 uh, miles more seconds. Now. Come on. And in a last ditch attempt at pulling back some male dignity, the boys have employed Chris, the fastest man in the universe, to give them some inside track tips. Golden rule, keep pedaling. Don't yeah, stop pedaling. Yeah. Got to the corners, just pedal really Press hard. hard on the bends and you'll stay upright. Golden rule number two. Trust me. Make It'll sure you so. pedal hard. If you do stop pedaling, you'll end up over the handlebars. So that's... The... And seriously hurt, yeah? Yes, it will be sore. So why is the bike such an amazing form of transport? Firstly, the wheels minimise friction. And secondly, by sitting on the saddle, you don't have to waste energy lifting your body weight up and down. So all your leg power can be used to push the bike forwards. Interesting. Did you know that it takes less energy to cycle one mile than it takes to walk? <coughs> Sorry. Blue line, blue line. Of course, there are exceptions to the rule, like Nicky's teeny weeny little bike here. Look at him, he's so cute. So we've got a three pig, one girl race. I know who my money's on. It's going to go like this Rachel, Mike, Holly. Yeah, they're going to lose pretty much. Each competitor has been staggered around the course depending on their fitness. Rachel's at the back to give the boys a fighting chance. Next, amazingly, is Ollie, then Mike, and finally Nicky. The rules are simple. First one to complete four laps wins. And they're off. Push, little Nicky. Push. Who's gonna win? 
Who's gonna win? On the second lap, Ollie and Rachel pull away, leaving Mike in their trail. And little Nicky is still on his first lap. By the third lap, Rachel pulls ahead of Ollie, but the big boy won't give up easily. Mike is nowhere to be seen, and Nicky still hasn't completed a lap. And as the finish line approaches, Ollie stages a comeback, but it's too late, and Rachel is the winner. Best win of my life, that. I thought I'd done quite well, personally. Not really, Ollie. The race was already over, and Rachel was slowing down when you almost carved her up like a one-man blitzkrieg. Nevertheless, it was a good effort. Well done, big boy. So what have we learnt today? Chris Hoy has enormous legs and is incredibly fast on a bike. Physically fit girls are quicker than unfit male pigs. And if we all cycle everywhere, the world would be a happier, healthier and cleaner place. Reclaim the streets! Now, dear viewer, if you find the sight of blood unsettling, you may want to leave the room. One in four people in the UK is on a diet at any given time. But have you ever wondered how much fat is there when you can pinch an inch? How much fat is there in your average spare tire? To find out, Tubby Dan is off to meet top plastic surgeon, Dr. Alex Carides, to get his spare tire sucked out through the power of liposuction. I want to lose weight on my front, mainly my stomach and my moves. I want to be right in the middle of uh, Ross Kemp and Michael Jackson, right down the centre somewhere. Yeah, how much do you think I'm going to be losing? I, like, figure, I, think, I figure we should be probably taking out a about um, one liter, one to one point five liters. <laughs> Seem to have obviously a deposit of fat just around there. Yep. You also tend to have a little bit of a bulging on the sides here, so-called love handles. Love handles. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Is that ticklish? Eh? No, no, no. I just no? think it's quite cool. Okay. Some dudes okay. touching my moobs. Yeah. <laughs> now prepare yourself for something you've never heard before. Dan being quiet. So we've just felt a little bit of the anaesthetic going in. So you feel a little bit um, sleepy. How long is it going to take for me to go to sleep? It's quite quick. I can under... Uh, I can under... Um, um, Alright, you just relax. That's nice and Well done. Nice and relaxed. Last chance. If you don't like blood, look away now. Okay. Now this is the instrument that we use. A long needle with some holes at the, right at the end. And so the fat's going to come in through here, through this tube, down into this container here, which is basically attached to a suction device. Um, it's, I suppose it's akin to a power toothbrush. Uh. So it seems that all you need for liposuction is a cross between a drill to dislodge the fat and a hoover to suck it out. Simple. So we're going to put the liposuction into the area. As you see here in the tube, you can see the fat coming out. Remember, Dr. Carides predicted Dan would lose between one to one and a half liters of fat in surgery. 10 minutes into the experiment, and he's already sucked out more than half a liter. Mm. Occasionally, yes, you get patients who think that I can give them uh, Peter Andre's six pack. <laughs> Not that he has it anymore, I believe. 20 minutes and halfway through surgery, and it looks like the doctor may have underestimated the amount of fat Dan was going to lose. That's a liter's worth already, and there's still plenty of Dan left to go. As you can see here, this side is done, so it dips in. This side's still got the fat and the fluid in it, so it's higher, and it's also fuller on this side, whereas this side curves inwards. You've got a better contour here than you do on this side, which has yet to be done. Dr. Caridis isn't just sucking out Dan's fat, he's actually stripping away the cells that make and store it. Sounds great, doesn't it? But is it a solution? Once the fat's gone, what's to stop Dan stuffing his face? Well, if he piles on more calories than he needs, what will happen is that uh, some of the fat cells remaining here will take on the extra calories. He'll probably find he'll, he'll get fatter in areas that he, that he wouldn't before. 
That's why a lot of men who have liposuction on the stomach end up with large male breasts if they put weight back on. Boobies. Right on, sister. Dan has been prodded with Dr Alex's tool for 40 minutes. And now it's time for the moment of truth. Just how much fat is there when you pinch an inch? OK, I think that's pretty much it. And the total amount of fat that we've taken out is... That's probably about uh, one litre of fat. 950, so just under two litres. Tend to sweat a bit with this. As you can see there, a bit wet. So I probably lost about as much as he did. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the best way to lose fat? Well, as we've seen, liposuction is highly effective in the short term. Two litres in 40 minutes. But the potential for putting it back on again is very high. A far more effective solution is to take a long-term approach. Cut the calories and exercise for 40 minutes three times a week. Simple. The weight will stay off and you'll feel a whole lot healthier, thinner and happier. How are you doing, Dad? Oh, all right. Very, very good. Yeah, they used to fill the boobs. <laughs> they weren't like that, but now they're like... Mm -hmm.